Good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, I would like to introduce uh, Canon's uh, new ultrasound Doppler technology, uh, technology uh, SMY, uh, and demonstrate interesting images obtained uh, with this method uh, in the area of obstetrics. Uh, SMI is a new blood te technology that goes beyond conventional Doppler uh, techniques. Uh, compared to conventional color Doppler and power Doppler, the advantage of SMI are low velocity flow, uh, flow visualization, high resolution, uh, minimal motion artifacts, and a uh, high frame rate. Using conventional uh, Doppler technology, a low cut filter is not possible to distinguish between clutter signal and actual minute blood flow. Uh, blood flow signals are removed together with the motion artifacts. On the other hand, uh, with SMI, clinically necessary information can be extracted. These pictures uh, uh, show uh, small vessels uh, small vessels uh, <clears throat> in the fetal kidney with fetal movement in conventional color Doppler uh, and SMI at same PRF. If a strong area thing uh, is disturbing the depiction of imaging of in conventional color Doppler, uh, small vessels in kidney are cre clearly expressed by SMI. Furthermore, only while uh, nine, nine, nine frequency per second uh, is obtained using conventional color Doppler. However, uh, in, in SMI, uh, 55 frequency per second, uh, per second is also very useful for reducing motion artifacts in, in, in examination. I would like to show a uh, fetal vessels demonstrated using SMI. Uh, we can see a uh, small uh, abnormal vessels. Because SMI can detect slow blood flow, uh, fetal venous, venous systems also can be de depicted. Uh, this is umbilical cord and uh, umbilical vein, uh, hepatic vein, ductus venosus, uh, portal vein. Clearly seen. <clears throat> Furthermore, even in the early second trimester, uh, fetal vessels can be detected precisely. This picture is showing umbilical cord entanglement between monochorionic monoamniotic twins. As early as 10 weeks of gestation, umbilical cord entanglement is diagnosed. This is a 3D image. A longitudinal and cross-sectional investigations using ultrasound examinations during pregnancy can be used to clear, uh, clarify the mechanism and the pathophysiology of abnormal fetal and placental development. I think SMI must be useful for such embryological and placental assessments in obstetrics. This slide show uh, some picture of uh, the percent uh, on maternal side. Uh, this is on maternal side and the fetal side. Uh, flushing scatter, we can see here, uh, is a interbir uh, blood flow in intervira space uh, from spiral artery. Contrary to uh, on fetal heart, fetal, fetal side, uh, from cold insertion, uh, we can see a uh, <coughs> villous tree. The, these capillaries uh, were uniformly small and tapered in the placenta. These pictures are made by SMI and smart 3D methods. This is the umbilical cord insertion site. Uh, this is cord. And, uh, Placenta cotyledon, uh, were, uh, cotyledons were uh, seen. Uh, this image, these are uh, virus tree, and this is maternal uh, blood flow uh, from 
uterine artery. This is spiral arteries. This slide shows uh, the uh, coronic surface basically branding, branching from the umbilical cord placenta insertion at 40 weeks of gestation. Peripheral beta 3 in the cotyledon demonstrated by SSMI and Smart 3D. And this image clearly shows a coronic surface basically branching from the umbilical cord, umbilical cord to placenta. Uh, on the other side, an uh, intervalar space here, uh, blood flow with an uh, appearance of cloudy smoke uh, form spiral artery. These are intervalar space. Uh, this image shows uh, uh, a coronic surface uh, basis branching from the umbilical cord. Uh, to the peripheral virus trees uh, in the cotyledons, uh, comparing 40 weeks and 30 weeks of gestation. In the early gestation, cotyledons are small, small cotyledons. But uh, with the advancing gestation, cotyledons are gathered uh, together and enlarged uh, at the same as the pathological findings. SMI enable us to show such placental development. We can see the uh, difference between 40 weeks and 30 weeks of gestation. I would like to demonstrate some ultrasound picture to know useful property of SMI to detect placental abnormalities. First, uh, because color Doppler can detect blood flows, we can distinguish subcoronic hematoma in the uterus uh, from the placenta tissue. Even in the early pregnancy, SMI can express Doppler small flow signals in the placenta. Therefore, an echoic mass is able to be considered as a subcoronic hematoma. I think the placental abruption, even in the earlier stage, from onset might be possible to make diagnosis using SMI. In this case, an anechoic mass is observed on the placenta surface. Although SMI can detect minute vessels in the placenta, SMI Doppler signals were not detectable in the placenta mass here. Therefore, uh, the diagnosis of placenta infarction uh, can be made. This is a delivered placenta. Multiple placental infarction with fibrin deposition are observed. This is the first report to describe the placenta vascularity depicted using SMI in placenta infarction uh, published in placenta. Next. This is a case of cervical pregnancy at six weeks of gestation. Uh, although uh, Doppler signals could not be detected using a conventional uh, color Doppler <coughs> method, uh, however, minute vessels surrounding gestational sac in the digital area in the cervical canal were detected by using SMI. This case was treated using MTX. After administration of MTX, Doppler flow was decreased with serum HCG, HCG reduction. Finally, after natural discharge of gestational sac, SMI flow could not be detected around the uterine sac cervix. I think SMI is useful for the evaluation of the therapeutic success. Next, uh, I would like to introduce a ultra wideband high frequency probe, uh, 18 megahertz and 24 megahertz. This is, these are pictures of a, a early fetal, fetal vessel fetus uh, using a 18 megahertz linear, linear probe. A uh, very small uh, structure can be uh, investigated. Here, I would like to uh, demonstrate a case of placenta previa complicated by the placenta incurator located on the anterior, an anterior uterine wall with a cesarean scar. 
investigated using high frequency linear probes and SMI. At 34 weeks gestation, the placenta was seen bar barging into the bladder, and the placenta lacuna were investigated using B mode. Conventional cardopra demonstrated enlarged bridging vessels on the bladder wall. Transabdominal ultrasonography performed using a 18 megahertz linear probe demonstrated a clearly the absence of uterine myometrium at the site of cesarean skull. And these ultrasound findings suggested the diagnosis of placenta in crater. This is a myometrium. A cesarean section at 35 gestation weeks and the second operation for hysterectomy three days later, cesarean section was planned. First, uh, the infant was delivered from the uterine fundus of the, uh, without the placenta separation. A 24 megahertz linear transducer was used to in investigate directly the uterine zerosa during cesarean section which revealed an obliterated myometrium here. This, this is a picture of panoramic view, and depth is only three centimeter. A present accurate spectrum is clearly demonstrated. Hysterectomy was performed successfully following uterine arterial embolization to reduce blood flow to the uterus. SMI was able to detect the decrease in placental blood flow during the procedure, although uh, blood flow uh, of intervenous space, here, 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 uh, was observed even after uterine arterial embolization. However, blood flow in the uterine myometrium, here, 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 uh, was significantly reduced post-procedure. After delivery, uh, we compared uh, perinatal ultras, ultras, ultrasound, ultrasonographic findings with the pathologic findings. These pictures are cross-sectional uh, pictures of SMI. Uh, perinatal SMI showed small vessels, uh, which are uniformly shaped, uh, uniform, uh, uniformly small and tapered in the uterine body, where there was no adhesion placenta. Uh, on the contrary, in the lower uterine segment with a placenta accurate uh, spectrum, enlarged, enlarged blunt main uh, and secondary stem vessels were observed, and uh, no uh, tertiary BD uh, was observed. These pictures are from the placenta tissue displayed sonographically and histopathophysiologically. Very similar pathologic findings, detailed mainstream virus vessels were obtained. Furthermore, placental imaging of the area around the uh, dilated vessels in the lower uterine segment showed hyperechogenicity hypo, hypo and uh, absence of SMI Doppler signals around he here. Uh, <clears throat> at the same time, pathologic findings uh, confirmed the infarction of the peripheral belly, uh, absence of the intervenous space due to the uh, placenta tissue adhering strong, strongly to the myometrium. We believe uh, the high frequency probe could not, uh, not only uh, demonstrate the thin myometrium, but also detect the avascularity uh, of the peri peripheral virus tree and the congested stem vessels due to damage the peripheral virus vessels. These uh, case reports, uh, we planned a new study in order to clarify whether histological findings the placenta were detected using SMI antenatally. Patients with uh, FGR, uh, placenta and umbilical cord abnormalities uh, and hypertensive disorder were included. Ultrasound examinations using SMI performed within two weeks before delivery was compared to histological find, uh, findings. Uh, today, I would like to demonstrate some of these study cases. 
Uh, <clears throat> this case uh, with uh, FGL uh, and hypercoiled code, uh, uh, cesarean section was performed due to non reassuring fetal status at 38 weeks of gestation. Uh, ultrasound sonographic findings showed uh, enlarged stem bilirubin. This is a confirm, uh, con con confirmed uh, congestion of stem bilirubin uh, at histological as a histological findings. Uh, the other findings showed uh, an an echoic area uh, was observed. These were uh, infarction in histological findings. Next, uh, this case was uh, uh, with preeclampsia and FGR, a cesarean section due to oligohydra amnios at the 34 weeks of gestation. Uh, this case uh, was a uh, ultrasonically uh, observed hypervascular flow in terminal B. This was a confirmed uh, pathologically a hypervascularized bili. This uh, placenta uh, was uh, in cases with preeclampsia and FGR. Cesarean section uh, uh, was uh, performed due to an NRFS at the 28th of gestation. Uh, diffuse scatter flow as an intervillar space, but uh, Bilas three was could not uh, observe could not be observed. Uh, this uh, pathological findings shows uh, a vascular villi uh, and infarction. This is a summary of SMR finding compared to pathological findings in the placenta. We think scatter flow in the black ground indicates intervillous maternal blood flow. In the normal placenta, sharp tapered virus vessels are investigated on, on the such background scatter noise with maternal pulse. However, in the region of infarction, SMI shows an echo, while in the region avascular bili, on, on only scatter noise with a maternal pulse is investigated without flow uh, of virus 3. And furthermore, hypervascularized terminal B and the congestion of stem B are, are the same as pathological findings. I'd like to con conclude this presentation. I think SMI is uh, helpful for a uh, fetal and placental morphological assessment with evaluation of small vessels, especially evaluation of the intensity of, uh, in peripheral small vessels in the parenchymatous organs uh, might show function uh, of the organs. However, measurement of quality uh, and quanti quantity of uh, Doppler intensity is not available now. But as shown in this presentation, placental pathologic findings are possible to be obtained antenatally. This new blood flow imaging technique is acceptable not only for the purpose of a perinatal clinical assessment, but also pathophysiological clarification of various placental abnormalities. Thank you for your attention.